what's up programmers welcome back so in the last lecture we looked at structures how to define them and how to access the properties of the structure now so in this lecture we'll be looking how are the structure elements actually stored in our memory okay so say assume a structure which contains uh, three properties that is name age and roll number now suppose we created a, a dummy structure containing certain values say name as a our age as 21 and roll number 123 now the one thing to note is that our name is a character it's not a string okay so it is a single character age is an integer roll number is an integer okay so suppose our structure element starting address is 1324 right so as the name is a character it will occupy only one byte okay so the next address will be plus 1 that is 1325 and then our age comes in which is integer which occupies 4 bytes so uh, from 1325 it will go on till 1329 okay and our roll number also occupies 4 bytes so it will go from 1329 to 1333 okay so this is how the structures are actually stored now but there is one catch to it here that is if you use a turbo c or turbo c++ compiler then this will be stored in this way but if you use a uh, some modern compiler say suppose ming gw then this will be stored in a different pattern now which i'll explain you so we'll take the previous example that is the name age and roll number uh, now we'll put in these values okay so if you look in the modern compiler then the memory location that is stored is it is 1324 you have the starting memory location and the next memory location where our age is it is 1328 okay and the last for the roll number starting address is 1332 okay so what happens to the three byte that are left in between basically these bytes are blank so our character will occupy only one byte that is from 1325 uh, 1324 to 1325 okay so this one byte will be occupied by our character and the next three bytes will be left blank now i'm just going to uh, prove to you by executing the program and showing you that this uh, this is how actually it is stored okay so i have just uh, i have already written, uh, written down the program now first we define a structure that is a student having a character name uh, integer age and roll number as a uh, integer and then we create a structure uh, variable that's a and we assign the properties some value now this is another technique of assigning values uh, properties that is you individually assign each property a certain value okay and then i have just printed the memory location for each of the uh, starting address of each of the property that is i have used percent u now percent u is unsigned integer as you know that pointer can never be negative okay so it uh, pointer is always stored in, a, in an unsigned integer so you need to use percent u to print a pointer and i have used an address of operator now address of operator basically gives the address of that particular variable that is a dot name i am asking the address of the name which is stored inside the structure variable a and i'll print it now i remind you that if you are using a turbo c or c++ compiler you will get the memory locations as i showed you in the first slide but if you are using certain mo modern compiler then you will get it as you see on my screen now as you can see uh, the address of name is 723 i'll just read the last three digits uh, that is 723 the second is 728 and the last is 732 now in this case even though character is occupying only one byte the three uh, bytes in between are left blank and then our age is uh, started and then our roll number is started now one thing to note is that the address that you see on my screen may not be as same on your screen this differs if you run this program multiple times you might get certain different addresses okay the main thing to note is that the difference is always four now why does this happen in modern compiler let's look into that so as you know that uh, today 32 bit computer has become a standard basically any computer that you get is 32 bit you also have access to 64 bit computers but generally if you buy any pc it supports 32 bit okay and uh, even if you have a 64 bit computer you still run an compiler which is 32 bit okay so that's why uh, you should know that your uh, processor is 32 bit right and this 32 bit is equivalent to 4 bytes okay so uh, what does this 4 byte have to do with the processor okay so the processor 
if it is a 32 bit processor it can access 4 bytes at a time that is if it is given a starting location of say 1324 it can access 4 bytes directly so it can from 1324 to 1328 it access at a time then it can then it can access 1328 to 1332 and then the later 4 bytes okay so you might uh, say that uh, why not remove this blank space and put an age over here now I'll take you back to the previous slide now if it was this scenario now what will happen if I, we have a 32 bit uh, processor then what will happen we'll pick from 1324 to 1328 okay that will be somewhere over here in between so you'll have the name and certain portion of the age now what happens is that when you pick out the age okay you can easily pick out the age uh, sorry uh, you can easily pick out the name but if you try to pick out the age in the first time you have accessed 3 bytes that is 3 bytes of the age and 1 byte is, if, uh, is still left waiting ok so what you have to do you have to access from 1328 to the 4 bytes that is 1332 ok so what happens is that in the first cycle we got the full name that is the 1 byte of name uh, 3 bytes of age and in the third cycle we will get 1 byte of age and 3 byte of roll numbers now the now what happens as you in the first cycle you got 3 bytes of age and 1 byte uh, later in the next cycle so what will the compiler have to do is compiler will have to store the 3 bytes and then the later the 4 bytes rearrange them in proper format and then give you the value stored at that location ok so this is the extra complication that arises when you don't use when you don't leave the space blank ok uh, I know this concept is quite complex now if you know memory banking or you have some background knowledge about microprocessors uh, that will make it very simple for you to understand now if you have not understood what I said I suggest you to go rewind back and look at this part again so that's it for this tutorial please do subscribe to our channel like our videos and do provide your suggestions and also your if you have any doubts put them in the comment section below you can follow us on facebook or you can also read our blog where we post various posts that is on wethecomputerguys.com uh, you can find the link in the description below thank you